Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we're going to look at the total synthesis of Dragosyn's A to C. This work, Total Synthesis of Dragosyn's A to C through Electrochemical Cyclization, was published in Angavante Chemie by the Baran Group. These compounds were first isolated from cyanobacterium collected off the coast of Panama in 2019. The team could not conclusively identify the species of bacteria, however, they note that it has a symplocal like morphology. These compounds show a modest activity against lung cancer cells, and structurally, they are related to a compound that was isolated from Streptomyces platensis, which was previously synthesized in 26 steps by the Nakata group. These structures differ in their stereochemistry at the 3' position and also the oxidation at the 4' position. These compounds are quite unusual, and they feature a nine-membered macrocyclic framework bearing an oxidized pyrrolidine moiety. The most unique feature of these compounds is the oxidation at the 4' position, which has only been observed once before in a natural product. In Dragosin A, this bears a methoxy group, while in B and C, a chlorine atom is present. The group developed a very short and efficient synthesis for these compounds. To form the macrocyclic ring, they would utilize an oxidative electrochemical cyclization, while the stereochemistry of the pyrrolidine group could ultimately be derived from the chiral pool. The oxidized 4' prime position could be generated using a decarboxylate of chlorination, which could be followed up with a glycosylation. So let's start with the synthesis. This began with the oxidation of an alcohol derived from tyrosine. Tempo, which is present in catalytic amounts, is first oxidized by sodium hypochlorite, forming an oxoammonium salt. This is attacked by the hydroxyl group, and a hydrogen atom can then be abstracted, forming the aldehyde. The resulting hydroxylamine is then oxidized by sodium hypochlorite, which is present in stoichiometric amounts, to reform tempo. This aldehyde was taken forward as crude and subject to a Wittig reaction. The amine is first deprotonated by sodium hydride, and the nitrogen anion that is formed can then attack triphenylvinyl phosphonium bromide. This forms the illid necessary for the intramolecular Wittig reaction. This illid attacks the aldehyde to form the four membered oxophosphatane intermediate that can then undergo a cycloreversion to eliminate triphenylphosphine oxide and form the dihydropyrrole in a 68% yield with a 98% EE over two steps. With this ring now formed, they could then deprotect the tosyl group. On the large scale, this was done in a 70% yield using lithium naphthalide. This reagent acts as a one electron reductant and must be freshly prepared by sonicating lithium metal in a naphthalene solution. It is a very reactive reagent and the reaction must be kept cold at all times and care must be taken to quench the excess reagent very slowly. As an alternative to this reagent, they also developed a novel electrochemical method to carry out this transformation. This method generates reducing conditions using rapid alternating polarity, and this can cleave the tosyl group in the same manner as the typical birch conditions. They could generate the compound in a 50% yield using this method. However, this could only be performed on a small scale due to the volume limitations of the electrocin reactor used. This compound was taken forward to an epoxidation. It is first protonated by PTSA and then peracetic acid is added to the reaction mixture. This undergoes a concerted addition with both carbon oxygen bonds formed simultaneously and acetic acid being eliminated as a byproduct. This formed the target compound in a 62% yield, along with the undesired diastereomer, which could be separated by chromatography. Overall, the reaction had a 4.5 to 1 DR, and the undesired isomer could be crystallized to prove its stereochemistry. In the next step, the 1,2 dioxygenation motif was created by opening this epoxide. The compound is first complex to boron trifluoride, which can coordinate to both the nitrogen and the oxygen atom. Benzoic acid is then added, and this preferentially attacks the less sterically hindered side of the epoxide, forming the benzoate ester. Upon completion of this step, sodium carbonate and methyl chloroformate are added to the reaction mixture, reacting with the amine to protect it as a mock group. This formed the target compound in a 59% yield, along with a 19% yield of the regioisomer formed from the attack of the benzoic acid on the opposite side of the epoxide. With this fragment complete, it could then take part in a glycosylation reaction. This reaction used a ribose diol derivative, 
with a thiodide dioxide donor group. This thiodide dioxide was activated with a mixture of NIS and silver triflate. Both of these activators can be attacked by the sulfur to produce a cation that is then eliminated, forming a positive charge that is stabilized by the lone pair on the pyran oxygen. This can undergo intramolecular attack from the ester group at the two position, forming an oxocarbenium ion with a five-membered ring that blocks the bottom face of the molecule in a process known as anchimeric assistance. This guides the stereoselectivity of the glycosylation reaction, forcing the nucleophilic alcohol to attack from the top face, forming the target glycoside and an 81% yield. The benzyl ethers could then be deprotected using hydrogen gas and Perlman's catalyst. With the glycosidic bond now formed, they could then carry out the critical macrocyclization reaction. This was done using an electrochemical oxidative cyclization. Due to its proximity to the aromatic ring, the benzylic position is susceptible to oxidation, and the group found that this was most effectively done using electrochemical methods. The precise details of this mechanism aren't known, but it is thought that it first goes through the abstraction of a hydrogen radical and then further oxidation to form a cation. This can then undergo an intramolecular attack from one of the primary hydroxyl groups, forming the desired ether. This formed the desired macrocycle in a 52% yield in two cycles, with 5.5 to 1 dr and 11% of recovered starting material. The preference for this diastereomer is guided by the stereochemistry at the anomeric position, which promotes the attack of the hydroxyl group on the same face of the ring. In the next step, the remaining primary hydroxyl group was oxidized to a carboxylic acid using TPAP. In this reaction, catalytic tetrapropyl pyruthanate first reacts with the hydroxyl group, oxidizing it to an aldehyde, forming a ruthenium 5 intermediate. This can be re oxidized back to ruthenium 7 by NMO, or it can undergo disproportionation to form a ruthenium 6 species along with a ruthenium 4 oxide, which is also able to serve as an oxidant. This oxidation can be stopped at the aldehyde, or it can be pushed further by using higher loadings of NMO. The aldehyde is in equilibrium with the hydrate, and this can be further oxidized to form the carboxylic acid in a 68% yield. This acid was required for a barton mccombie chlorination. It is first deprotonated by triethylamine, and then attacks HOTT. This reagent contains a uranium moiety, and can react in a similar manner to uranium-based peptide coupling reagents. It is particularly effective at preparing sterically hindered Barton esters. After attacking the HOTT reagent, the activated ester is then attacked by DMAP, eliminating a urea byproduct and forming a more active ester. This ester can be attacked by N-oxythiopyridone, forming the Barton ester. No radical initiator was used for this reaction, so it is likely initiated by trace amounts of carbon trichloride radical present in the carbon tetrachloride solvent. This reacts with the thiopyridone, triggering the homolysis of the oxygen-nitrogen bond. This forms a carboxylate radical that then eliminates as carbon dioxide, leaving a radical now residing on the C4 position of the ribose ring. This abstracts a chlorine radical from the carbon tetrachloride solvent, installing the chloride in a 48% yield, along with the regeneration of the carbon trichloride radical. With this chloride installed, they could then access two different dragosin compounds from one single reaction. This takes advantage of the two possible reaction products that can be obtained by reducing a carbamate with lithium aluminium hydride. In this reaction, they used 18 equivalents of lithal. The lithium first coordinates to the carbamate, which is then attacked by the hydride to form a tetrahedral intermediate. In one reaction pathway, this then eliminates methoxide forming an amide that is further reduced, forming a hemiaminal type intermediate, with the oxygen coordinated to either lithium or an aluminium species. This can be eliminated, forming an aluminium ion that is once again reduced to form a methyl group. In addition to the carbamate, the benzoate groups are also reduced, affecting a global deprotection. The workup of this reaction was quite critical, as basic workups, such as Rochelle salt, which is commonly used for lithal, resulted in the loss of the chloride. Therefore, the reaction was quenched with a slow addition of a dilute TFA solution, and Dragosin C was isolated in a 27% yield as a TFA salt. From the same reaction mixture, they could also isolate Dragosin B. In this reaction pathway, hydride adds to the carbamate as before, but instead of eliminating methoxide, the nitrogen group is lost. 
As we saw before, these conditions also remove the benzoate protecting groups, allowing Dragson B to be isolated as a TFA salt in a 23% yield from this same reaction mixture. They found that they could favour the formation of Dragson B by using 50 equivalents of lithium aluminium hydride to produce it in an 84% yield. To form Dragosin A, the chloride needed to be replaced with a methoxy group. This was done using silver triflate in methanol, analogous to a glycosylation reaction. The silver is quite halophilic and coordinates to the chloride, promoting its elimination to form an oxonium intermediate. This is attacked by the methanol, which is present as a solvent, installing the methoxy group and completing the formation of Dragosin A in a 51% yield. This was formed as a single diastereomer with the stereochemistry guided by the macrocyclic ring, which likely distorts the conformation of the sp2 center, leaving only one face open to attack. So that brings us to the end of this synthesis. Join me in the next video, where we'll look at the total synthesis of hunterine A.